The hospitals are doing everything they can to try and reassure patients. They've upped security. They say they've replaced all saline in the hospital. But the relatives of patients we've been speaking to say they are concerned. Of course, they would be concerned, and I think they'll continue to be concerned until police manage to get to the bottom of what's happened here, who has contaminated the saline. And speaking to police, that could take several days. So what kind of impact is all this having on the hospital? Well, the hospital is running as normal. They have increased security. They've increased security inside the hospital and outside the hospital. They say they've also increased security when it comes to access to medicines. And we understand that many relatives visiting patients are being searched before they enter the wards. Other than that, the hospital says it has to be business as usual. This is a busy hospital in Stockport, and it has to continue to function. But obviously, it's a very different place at the moment in the midst of a police investigation. Now, the government has pledged more than £50 million in emergency aid for those affected by the drought in East Africa. Around half a million are thought to have been affected by the drought, the worst in East Africa for 60 years. The International Development Secretary, Andrew Mitchell, has been visiting the Dadaab camp in Kenya, which is overflowing with tens of thousands of refugees. Police were attacked by a crowd of 100 people during fresh disturbances in Portadown in Northern Ireland last night. Petrol bombs, bricks, fireworks and other missiles were fired at officers and their vehicles. Now do stay with us here on BBC News. In a moment we'll be joined by viewers on BBC One for a full bulletin with Riz Latif. If you want to know what's going on in government and see the big decisions as they happen. If you want to see what the people you voted for are doing. If you want to cut straight to the things that matter to you, go to the BBC's Democracy Live website with hundreds of hours of searchable debate and live streams from across the UK and Europe. You can track the decisions that affect your future. Go to bbc.co.uk slash democracy live for a closer look. A public apology from Rupert Murdoch for the phone hacking scandal. The media mogul uses full-page newspaper adverts to say he's sorry. Heightened security at a hospital in Stockport where three people died and contaminated saline is found. A relative of one of the victims expresses his disbelief. This came as, as a complete shock to us. Um, and I think the most difficult thing that we've had to deal with is the real uncertainty is exactly what happens next. The army faces further government cuts to help pay for reserve forces like the Territorial Army. Just to be setting the ball up. And struggling in the rain, the world's top golfers battle the elements Stay at the well Open. Inside it. Hello and good afternoon. Rupert Murdoch has made a public apology for the phone hacking scandal, taking out prominent advertisements in today's newspapers. It comes after a second of his most senior executives resigned last night. 
Les Hinton, chief executive of the media group's Dow Jones, was chairman of News International at the time Millie Dowler's phone was hacked. Sophie Hutchinson's report does contain some flash photography. The sorry state of Rupert Murdoch today. The media magnate sought to make amends by apologising in full-page adverts in his and rival newspapers. He said he was sorry that the news of the world was in the business of holding others to account. It failed when it came to itself. And although he's expressed his regret over what's happened previously, uh, this is, I think, by any standards, pretty fulsome. Uh, some might say abject. But you know, there's no question, this is a major turnaround. But even Rupert Murdoch admits simply saying sorry won't be enough. The apologies are part of a wider strategy to shut down the crisis engulfing News International. And it's clear, at least for now, there will be no let-up to the ongoing questions about this scandal. Such as just how much did News International executives like Rebecca Brooks know? She resigned yesterday alongside Les Hinton, who had been chief executive in the UK at the time.